Welcome to the African Origin of series, a series where we speak about the African origin of various items and the way they contributed to humanity's progress. This series aims to re-establish Africa's position as a central part of world history as well as human history. In the previous episode of this series, we saw how mathematical science and thinking were born in Africa. In today's episode of the African Origin of, we take a look at the African origin of astronomy. So please press the subscribe button and join me on the African origin of Astronomy The science that studies celestial objects seems to have its birthplace in Africa, the mother of humanity. For those who might not know this, astronomy is one of the oldest natural sciences, while mathematics is one of the oldest formal sciences. And these two, just like humanity, were both born on African soil. So what does this imply? This simply implies that scientific thinking was born in Africa thousands of years ago. As we saw in the previous video, archaeologists found artifacts showcasing mathematical knowledge in Africa that date back to 70,000 years ago. Let that sink in. This is in the Blombos cave in South Africa and 25,000 years ago for the Ishangobon in the DRC. This evidence comes to destroy the myth of the unscientific and illogical African hunter-gatherer that is so prevalent in popular discourse. As you shall see further in this video, our early African ancestors had pretty scientific-oriented minds and drew logical conclusions from their thorough observations. So what evidence do we have for Africa being the birthplace of astronomy? Let's start with the archaeological evidence that supports the African origin of astronomy. For those who have been following me, you may have already heard of this in one of my previous videos. Scientists today recognize that the earliest astronomical site of this world is found at the site of Naptaplaya in southern Egypt. This earliest astronomical site of humankind is dated at around 7500 BC. This predates by several thousands of years any known astronomical sites around the world such as the very famous site of Stonehenge in the United Kingdom. Yet Napta Playa is hardly known. For instance, our beloved online encyclopedia Wikipedia fails to mention Napta Playa in its article on the history of astronomy. Hmm. I wonder why. The site of Napta Playa showcases a complex alignment with the stars, which led some scholars to believe that it was used as a device to track the rising of certain stars. This site of Napta Playa is also believed to indicate a calendar circle that indicates the summer solstice sunrise. Certain scholars also believe that the site shows alignment with the star Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky and also it is the closest system to our solar system. The alignment with Sirius led some scholars to believe that the site of Napta Playa might be far older than we think, perhaps older by several thousands of years. And in my humble opinion, I believe it probably is older by at least two to three thousand years. Why do I think this way? Because the dating of the site is based on the human remains found there. While we know that the site was already inhabited by 10,000 BC, so it may well be the case that the stones were set there much earlier than we think. But that's just my opinion. In any case, Napta Playa presents a wealth of astronomical knowledge that is still being studied by scholars. As for the inhabitants of the site of Napta Playa, modern physical anthropology is clear on this. They were black Africans from south of the Sahara. We have to say this because any achievements found in Northeast Africa tend to be given to the Asians instead of the Africans. Past Western and Arab anthropologists, for instance, stated that the inhabitants of Napta Playa were Eurasians. This has been proven wrong though. So yeah, they were Africans from south of the Sahara. This shows that our black African ancestors 10,000 years ago were very much in love with the stars, so much so that they made it a science that is still being used today. Quite the contribution there. But that's not all, there's more. Now, it seems that there is even older evidence of astronomical knowledge in Africa. This is in the site of Mpumalanga in South Africa. Yes, again, South Africa. Makes sense, the region is home to some of the oldest human remains. So the site of Pumalanga presents a set of megaliths that may have been placed in accordance with the stars. 
as well as a large number of stone walls shaped in a circular manner that are intricately interconnected and spread over a vast region that covers an area of 10,000 square kilometers. 10,000 square kilometers. That's huge. And this area spreads in both South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. So if you want to see them, you can go to South Africa or Zimbabwe or Botswana. This site is also known as the Blaubowskral. Okay, this is a hard name for me to pronounce. It's also known as the name you see on the screen. The site is also known as the Adams Calendar. This site of Mpumalanga hasn't been thoroughly investigated so far. So most of what we can say here is mostly speculative. The only author that is known to have extensively investigated the site is Michael Tellinger. However, his theories on the site are, well, shall I say, a bit out there to be kind to the man. I mean, he believes that the site was created by ancient aliens and stuff. Really? Couldn't intelligent Africans have built this site? Whenever they find something so incredible that it blows their mind, the reaction of many Westerners is to attribute it either to another race or, if it is impossible to do so, ancient aliens. Aliens Bruh. that came before. They have done this in Egypt and they are doing it to the site of Pumalanga. Again, I ask, couldn't intelligent Africans have built this? This is actually what the current scholarship believes. They think Africans built this site, however, when they built it is the point of contention. Scholars say that the site was probably built by the Bokoni people of South Africa within the last 500 years, which could well be the case. However, I tend to disagree with it. Why? Well, because there is evidence of earlier human habitation in the region of Pumalanga that date back to 40,000 years ago. With that in mind, it is not far-fetched to think that our early ancestors in South Africa 40,000 years ago who already knew mathematics and abstract thinking could have been the builders of those remains. This ends the fact that those early human habitations 40,000 years ago show evidence of iron ore mining. If it is true that our early African ancestors 40,000 years ago in Pumalanga were the builders of this site, this would imply that they were the first astronomers in the world and this preceding every site by literally tens of thousands of years. I think this to be very likely, given the deep African astronomical tradition that can be seen all over the continent in various peoples with the ancient Chemites and Kushites being able to map out the sky and also create the world's most sophisticated calendar known to humans. This is not only my opinion. The Australian-American historian of science, Otto Negbor, or Negbor, or Nugbor, I don't know how you pronounce this name, Mr. Otto and something. I don't know how to pronounce this name. The name you see on the screen said of the ancient Egyptian calendar, that it is truly the only intelligent calendar that has ever existed in human history. This is coming from a man that was known for his great research on the history of astronomy. He is even blunter than I am. Another example of the Africans' deep knowledge of astronomy is found in the Dogon people of Mali. The Dogon people, according to the research of Dr. Shekhan Tatiop, were aware of the existence of the star Sirius B. Remember Sirius? The brightest star in the sky? Yes, it has a dwarf companion, a white dwarf companion star that is invisible to the naked eye. So you have the brighter star, which is called Sirius A, and the dwarf companion invisible to the naked eye, which is called Sirius B. So although Sirius B was invisible to the naked eye, the Dogon people were able to deduce its existence through mathematical processes, much like a modern German scientist in the 1840s. Here is what Dr. Shekhantajov says on this issue. What is even more extraordinary is that for the Dogon, the star Sirius is not the basis of the system. A minuscule star called Potolo or Digitaria is the true center of the Dogon system. In modern astronomy, it is called the invisible companion of Sirius, which is also a double star. Potolo, its companion, is a white dwarf star invisible to the naked eye and its unexpected presence explains the perturbations of the orbits of Sirius and which is also the basis of the Egyptian sidereal calendar. Just look at these images of the Dogon system of the star Sirius and the modern scholar system of the star Sirius. It's just incredible. You have the Dogon on the left, the Dogon system on the left and the modern system on the right. They are identical. There is no denying it here. The Dogon people had a very advanced knowledge of astronomy. 
they knew the existence of a white dwarf star that is invisible to the naked eye without having any telescopes. This clearly showcases a deep knowledge of mathematics and astronomy among the African people. All this evidence supports the idea that astronomical tradition in Africa may be from a far older period in the site of Pumalanga in South Africa. African archaeologists and scientists must investigate the Pumalanga site further to give us a better sense of its significance. Anyway, one thing is for sure though, the science of astronomy was born in Africa thousands of years ago and this makes complete sense for the eldest people of the human family were the first to look at the heavens and think to themselves, what a wonder. With no internet, no TV, and no distractions such as TikTok and Instagram in the early days of humanity, we can easily imagine our early African ancestors spending hours each night looking up to the sky and studying the stars, which led them to invent a science that has allowed us to go to the moon. Quite the contribution. That's it for this episode. If you have enjoyed it, please like, share, comment and subscribe if you are new here. See you in the next one. Peace.